it's often the punch uh, you don't see that knocks you out if uh, you're into boxing. It's often the person that you don't see that gets you. I'm uh, going to play uh, a brief clip showing you all the people, or the majority of the people, in the White House uh, that uh, were standing uh, with Donald Trump when he signed those executive orders on uh, Friday and Saturday. Here's a clip of all the people that are readily visual in this signing. Here we go. Now, there are two people that you don't see, and I'm going to get to those uh, later. But you see this person here? That's Michael Flynn, who is Donald Trump's national security advisor. Mr. Flynn effectively, on Saturday, completed a power grab of sorts. What he did was he apparently talked Donald Trump along with the help of another gentleman who I will uh, get to in a moment in order to neuter the chairman of the Joint Chiefs and also the director of uh, national intelligence. They were both removed or restricted on their access to the National Security Council. So in terms of national security, this guy has just killed all of his competition as far as his ideas dealing with national security and in particular foreign affairs. Now, if you didn't know Michael Flynn, this person was supposedly a very intelligent individual, but he has people issues and he has authority issues. Mr. Flynn is an avid fan of conspiracy theories and he often uses and cites conspiracy theorists such as Alex Jones and Infowars in his pronouncement about things that are going on. This guy loves dealing with alternative facts. But that being said, there are two people that you can't see one of them, which is actually here, and he's to the right of this gentleman, and the other one is not in the White House at this point or at this meeting because actually he doesn't really belong at this meeting. Here is one of the gentlemen. That is Steve Bannon. And uh, Steve Bannon, for those of you who uh, don't know who he is, Steve Bannon is Donald Trump's chief advisor. Mr. Bannon is a white supremacist. He's also a Duganist Eurasian philosophy follower. What does that mean? That means he's an Islamophobe. 
He believes that the West and Russia, oh, here's that magic uh, name again, Russia, should unite and fight against the religion and people practicing Islam. He's also a Leninist. What's a Leninist? A Leninist believes that any amount of government is no good and he's for the systematic destruction of the US government. The other picture that you don't see is this man. This is Jared Kushner, Donald Trump's brother-in-law. Did I say brother-in-law? I'm sorry, son-in-law. He's married to Ivanka. Between these two guys and this guy right here, we are going to be in for a world of trouble. Why do I say that? Well, it's without a doubt that between Steve Bannon and Michael Flynn, those executive orders that uh, you saw on uh, Friday regarding uh, the ban of uh, travel from citizens of those seven countries, it's my opinion that it was those two individuals who formulated and more than likely wrote that plan. Now, the guy right here, this guy right here, this guy is a weasel. And he has no experience as far as actual administration. When the RNC hired this guy, he was hired as a numbers cruncher. And in order to get the Republican Party back into fiscal responsibility, he took over from Michael Steele. And he did, in fact, accomplish his goal to the point that he was elevated to the chairman of the Republican uh, National uh, Committee. That's his claim to fame. This woman right here, she's willing to back every single lie and alternative fact that Donald Trump or anybody within his administration wants to put out there. This guy right here basically is probably fourth in the chain as far as influence on Donald Trump. All he basically wants to talk about is uh, religious freedoms being a, a homophobe and basically uh, that's it. He, if you don't know who this is, that's a Mike Pence and he was responsible for trying to institute some of the most heinous homophobic uh, laws on the books of Indiana and he was or is a firm believer in voter suppression, which was accomplished in the state of Indiana. So uh, folks, uh, it's only been one week and Donald Trump missed a short attention span or attention deficit disorder uh, person has already pissed off Mexico, uh, he's upset a, a bunch of countries in the Middle East. The people in the UK currently have a petition going to bar him from entering their country. And at last count, it was about 300,000 signatures on that petition. Okay. Uh, he's insulted Germany. He's uh, basically threatened to uh, withdraw from NAFTA, which obviously is going to upset Canada. And now he has upset uh, various citizens by pretty much trying to, well, I shouldn't say eviscerate, uh, trying to weasel his way around his Muslim ban uh, by 
basically identifying uh, countries for the ban, which, in all honesty, uh, President Obama had labeled these countries problems, but never issued a ban on travel. Now, various countries that should be on the ban aren't. But let's get away from the ban. There is a consolidation of power going on here. Michael Flynn has consolidated his. Steve Bannon is now on the National Security Council. Why? I don't know, because he has no experience in national security. He's a white supremacist. But the people who should be on the National Security uh, Council with full status got kicked off and he got added. I'm surprised that they didn't add uh, Jared uh, Kushner as well. One week and two days and Donald Trump is effectively attempting to turn the United States into the United Fascist States. I'm just wondering when the Republicans are going to grow a pair of balls and start pushing back against this guy. It's my belief that they think that they can control him. And his recent executive orders prove otherwise. Now, yes, uh, they've been talking about the, the wall. Um, they've been talking about the uh, repealing Obamacare, notice I didn't say replace, so repealing Obamacare, uh, fiscal responsibility, which means uh, basically cutting Social Security, Medicare, and Medi-Cal. They've been talking about increasing uh, military spending. All these things that they're talking about do nothing to help or promote the American people. They talk about giving power back to the people, but in effect what they're doing is they're stripping power from the people. They're talking certain states, I should say, are uh, talking about uh, creating a new category for hate crimes, i.e. if uh, you do anything against a police officer, uh, in Louisiana and Mississippi, um, laws were recently passed to call them hate crimes. Mr. Trump is saying that uh, three to five million illegal people voted in the election, which everyone knows is a lie, and that probably is a in order to get some type of a national uh, voter uh, law or national voter suppression laws. There is a lot going on, folks, and I believe that uh, Mr. Bannon has had Mr. Trump sign that executive order on Friday in order to give cover to the power grab that took over on uh, Saturday so that we don't pay attention to that. Because folks, don't, don't get it twisted. That power grab that uh, Mr. Trump just signed on Saturday is legit. And you have a white supremacist that is sitting right next to the President of the United States whispering in his ear, our rights and freedoms are definitely at risk at this moment. And it's gonna be up to someone in Congress, and right now the Republicans have control, so it's going to be up to the Republicans to wake up, smell the roses, and do something about this stuff.